The Amagi class emerged from the end of World War I as the Japanese tried to revive and review their so-called 8-8 plan. This had started in the pre-Dreadnought era and called for a Japanese fleet of eight modern battleships and eight armoured cruisers, as this was the expected deterrent force required against the American Navy that was anticipated by the Japanese to eventually contain about 25 capital ships in total. With the rise of the Dreadnought era, this had been modified to eight Dreadnoughts and eight battle cruisers, but the Imperial Japanese Navy had never quite managed to reach this goal. By the time the two Nagatos were looking at being completed, they would have managed eight battleships and four battle cruisers, but two of those battleships would have been Kawachi class units of somewhat questionable value by the end of World War I. Further, the rise of the new 16 inch armed ships across the board, and possibly even more heavily armed successors, led the Japanese to consider that they needed a whole new 8 8 plan, with the starting point now being the Nagatos. This would discount the Kongos, Fusos and Iseis, as well as the Koachis. In addition, because of the pace of naval construction which seemed to be accelerating, the Imperial Japanese Navy also wanted the new 8-8 plan to only count ships under 8 years old, becoming an 8-8-8 plan, if you will. This would essentially mean Japan would need to build at least two capital ships a year for the rest of time, which would put a huge strain on their rather limited budget. But money was, for the moment, something for other people to worry about. With the last Japanese battle cruisers being the Congos, and with ships like Lexington on the drawing board, the Japanese came up with a number of designs for their new battle cruisers. The first of these were essentially longer, faster, battlecruiser versions of the Nagato class, but the escalating American plans for a huge navy and the increasing armament of the Lexington design prompted the design of the Tosa class battleships, more on those next week, and so four battlecruisers derived from this design were decided upon instead. These would be the Amagis. Initially, the ships were to be named Amagi, Akagi, Atago, and Ashitaka, although the last was changed to Takao later on, each of these ships being named after a mountain in Japan. With a normal displacement of just over 41,000 tonnes and a full displacement of 47,000 tonnes, the ships were of considerable size, with just over 131,000 shaft horsepower driving four screws for a speed of about 30 knots. In common with their battleship counterparts, they would be armed with five twin turrets carrying the 410mm or 16.1 inch guns that were also used in the Nagato and Tosa classes, for a total of ten main guns, although some investigation was also made into using a longer barreled 50 caliber version of the same weapon. Much like the British 13.5 inch gun dreadnoughts, these were arranged in a pair super firing forward, a pair super firing aft, and the final fifth turret amidships, in this particular case just behind the funnels. 16 casement mounted 5.5 inch guns, 6 single 4.7 inch AA guns, and no less than 8 heavy 24 inch torpedo tubes would round out the ship's firepower. In order to achieve their speed with a similar armament to the Tosas, the Amagis sacrificed protection, with the main belt just under 10 inches thick and a 3.7 inch armoured deck. Whilst this was not quite as poorly protected as a Lexington, it certainly was not going to stand up to any capital ship grade weaponry of the period, and so one must conclude that, like the Lexingtons, they were primarily designed with the classic battlecruiser mission profile in mind, as opposed to any actual battle line duties, unless the Japanese were planning on putting all the really unpopular officers on these ships. Despite having five main turrets, they were actually the shortest of the proposed battle cruisers of the early 1920s, with both the G3s and the Lexingtons being substantially longer, and the N3 battleships only being about six foot shorter. But despite this, although they were also the slowest of the planned battle cruisers, the overall Imperial Japanese Navy battle line would have been the fastest, with all the battleships capable of 26 knots plus, although again at the expense of protection. All four ships would be laid down, but they would all be cancelled by the Washington Naval Treaty. 
Atago and Takao would be broken up for scrap, but Amagi and Akagi were scheduled for conversion into aircraft carriers, matching Lexington and Saratoga, with the British not taking up the option to convert two of the G3s to match. Unfortunately, at this point, the Great Kanto earthquake of 1923 intervened, damaging the incomplete hull of the Amagi too badly for repair, and so she was also scrapped. Instead, the incomplete Tosa-class battleship Karga was taken in hand for conversion into the second carrier. Akagi's career as a carrier will eventually have its own video, but since that might take a while, in brief, the ship would finish conversion in 1927 with a rather interesting design that had no island and no less than three flight decks, two short takeoff decks and a main flight deck. This didn't really work very well to start with, and with the increasing size and weight of carrier aircraft, it meant the ship would eventually be rebuilt with a single, longer main flight deck and an island, although this was on the port side of the ship instead of the usual starboard. In this guise, the ship would lead the attack on Pearl Harbor, bringing the US into World War II, before going on to support various Japanese invasions and strikes, as well as operating in the Indian Ocean, sinking a number of Royal Navy vessels. The ship would miss the Battle of the Coral Sea, but would be in place for the Battle of Midway. Initially, it would perform quite well in both strike and defensive roles, savaging a number of American strike waves without incurring any damage. However, with the combat air patrol fighters having just cut a wave of devastated torpedo bombers apart, and the strike elements of the air group rearming to go after the American carriers again, waves of dauntless dive bombers appeared at high altitude undetected and began their attacks. These efforts yielded a fatal hit, where a bomb punched through the Hagadeck and blew apart most of the armed and fueled strike aircraft, starting a massive fire which would eventually force the ship's evacuation and then scuttling by destroyer torpedo. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.